Now continuing from where we left off in the last tutorial, uh, now that we know how to make a basic table, I'll discuss uh, all the other attributes that are in table. So in this tutorial, I'll be using a example of timetable and through that example, I'll discuss all the attributes. Now my table, uh, you can see here, uh, my table has five rows. This is the first row, this is the second, third, fourth, fifth. And you see I have collapsed all these, that's why it's, uh, it's, it's not showing what is inside all these rows. So when I expand my first row, so I just have one one entry in my first row and in my second row I have five entries and in all the other rows again I have five five entries. So uh, now I'll show you how my table looks like in my web page. So uh, this is what my table looks like in a web page. Now this is uh, this is a real funny image because everything is appearing uh, everything appears so small. So until and unless I make some entries, so it 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 it, it gives a very funny image. So I'll just go ahead and. Um, in my first row, I want the heading uh, timetable. So instead of TD, I have an alternate called TH, and TH stands for table header. So the basic difference between TD and TH is that whatever text that uh, you enter between the opening and closing TH tag, it appears as bolded as well as centered. So let's go ahead and write timetable. So I'll just save it and I'll show you. Uh, when you refresh it now uh, when i'll expand this i'll show you now this text this is actually bolded you can see the bold but uh, as the cell is very small you you can't make out if it has been centered or not so when the table expands you'll see that this text has been centered so uh, uh, so this is as far as the th tag is concerned now uh, this is my this is my second row and in my table i want the days uh, days to appear vertically and all the times to appear horizontally so naturally in my first entry um, I'll just put a cross because so let's go ahead and write Monday here Tuesday and I misspell that Tuesday and let's go ahead and write Wednesday here so uh, this is my table now again I'll refresh it now I have entered all these in the first entry of every row so I'll just refresh it now you see I have uh, I don't want anything over here because I have Monday in my first uh, Monday here Tuesday here Wednesday here now I, now I want all my timings to appear horizontally so I have to enter all the timings in the in the second row itself because this is the second row uh, sorry this horizontal line this is the second row and so all the timings I'll, I'll, I'll be entering in the second row itself. So this is my second row and let's enter the timing as let's say 9 a.m. 10 a.m. 11 a.m. And let's go ahead and write 12. So again, I'll save it and I'll show you that the layout of the table is complete. Now you see the table is com uh, the layout of the table is complete. I just have to enter uh, the subjects that I uh, that I have on at on Monday at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 and uh, uh, the same for Tuesday as well as Wednesday. So now you can see this is my this is th this is my first cell timetable. Now it is uh, just appearing uh, above the first cell. Now I want this a uh, timetable to uh, uh, to cover the entire page. So uh, I have something called cold span. Cold span stands for column span how many columns should one one entry span now right now by default the cold span is set as one that's why this cell is covering just one column now right now i have five columns so if i uh, enter the if i alter the cold span to five this should cover the entire table so now let's go ahead and make the changes in our coding now this is my th and i want this cell uh, to have a cold span of five so uh, again I'll just define the cold span for this and I'll just set, set it as 5. You can also set this as 6, 7, 8, it doesn't matter. So uh, I'll just refresh it and you'll see the difference. Now you see that this timetable, this cell is actually covering all the cells. So this is one of the attributes, this is called cold span and now you can see that this timetable, this has been centered. So uh, I'll just go and uh, fill some random uh, random text, Let, let's say physics just to complete just to complete my uh, table, let's write chem maths uh, CS and again physics chem maths IP and uh, okay yeah, yeah I'm sorry I'll just re replace one of the subjects with the break 
let's write break here and again during the same timing on any other day break Wednesday let's go ahead and write IT CS break break and again maths so I'll just save it and uh, show you that the table is complete and then we'll be discussing all the other properties okay so now my table is complete now uh, you can see uh, this break I have a break over here and I have a break over here now just as we did a cold span I also have a property that is called row span now if I want the break if I want just one cell to cover because at 11 a.m. on every day I have break so I want this break to cover to cover this uh, this entire vertical row so I can define the codes uh, again the row span by default it is set to 1 I can define the row span of this cell as uh, 3 so, so that it covers all these 3 uh, rows so I'll just go ahead and I'll delete all these because uh, I'll be defining just one row uh, I'll be defining yeah I'll just delete all this and in this TD I'll define the row span as 3 so again I'll save it and I'll show you the difference now you see that this one cell is actually con uh, covering 3 rows so this was cold span uh, because this is column 1, column 2, column 3, 4, 5 so I set the cold span to 5 and now I want my this break to cover 3 rows that's why I set as, uh, the row span as 3 now the attributes of table were border and border color now I can also define a width for my table let's go ahead and write width and set width as 500 pixels so again I'll save it and when I refresh it now the table is again it, it has been enlarged so you know you can set a width now I have two things called cell spacing as well as cell padding so I'll I'll show you uh, both of them one by one let let's go ahead and write cell spacing first let me enter some data and I'll show you what difference it makes so I define the cell spacing uh, I'm sorry I misspelled this cell spacing as 50 so again I'll save it and when I refresh it, now cell spacing is actually the distance between these cells and the border of the tables. So you can see that all the cells are spread out. So this is what a cell spacing can do. So the uh, cell spacing actually defines the distance between the border and the cells as well as the distance between uh, every cell. Now uh, let's say I define the cell spacing as 5. So they should come closer. Now you see all of them have come closer. Now now just just like cell spacing we also have an attribute called cell padding now cell padding is actually the distance between the text that you enter as well uh, and the walls of a particular cell so I'll save it again and um, now right now you can see that all these texts they uh, they are very close to the border now I have defined the cells padding as 10 so when I refresh it I'll tell you the difference before I refresh so all these texts they will uh, you know they'll move away from the border now when I refresh it now you can see there is a, there is some distance between the text that I have entered as well as the cell. So this is uh, what cell uh, padding can do. Now I have a few more tutorial attributes, so I'll just make another short tutorial. And this is it in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.